So the first thing about perspective that you need to know is you are always going to deal with a horizon line. And a horizon line is pretty much the field of vision that your, um, so if your eye is here, it is that level of um, level of the plane. Now, if you change your vision, if you decide to look up, the, the horizon line changes as well. And then on each side, you're going to have vanishing points. And with vanishing points, um, you can have several different vanishing points. Um, you can have a vanishing point here. You can have a vanishing point on the ends. And you can have a vanishing point in the middle of nowhere. So um, what these vanishing points do are they are the utmost um, depth of which your vision goes. So if I'm looking at my figure here, I've got a depth of field vision, and this is where the two vanishing points from here to here go. And if I'm looking down a corridor, my vanishing point would be in front of me. Um, and that would be something like this. And if I'm looking up or down at something, it would be it would go into a third direction. Now, vanishing points are multiple. Um, you have multiple vanishing points. The first thing that you need to understand that is that if you have an object, and I'm going to just draw real quick here, objects on a table. The table, and I'm looking at it from this direction, this would be considered two-point vanishing. Now, the table, if everything is pretty much set and, and uh, stacked on this table perpendicular and parallel to the table, you're fine. But as soon as you put a book that's diagonal, that book now follows a new vanishing point. So that's, that's essentially what you need to understand is the difference between the vanishing points. So from there, let's start on one point vanishing. A one point vanishing, you still have your horizon line, except your vanishing point is in the center here. From there, everything you draw is facing you. So from if I'm looking down a hallway, I'm just going to draw a hallway like this. And I'm sitting here and I'm looking down the hallway. That means all those tables, chairs, whatever you draw in here, all are following that vanishing point. Um, it isn't until you put something diagonal in there that follows a whole new set of vanishing points. All right. So no matter what, though, the horizon line stays the same. So a vanishing point would be something similar to this. I'm drawing this hall I'm talking about. So the first thing is you always draw the base, everything facing towards you. So at this point, I'm drawing, everything follows to these vanishing points. So this hall would fall to this vanishing point. Now, at some point in time, what's going to happen is that hall is going to end and tee off like I drew here. So at that point, what we need to do is we need to draw the end of that vanishing point like so. And from there, that gives us the hallway. Now, we know the hallway continues, so what you need to do is you need to follow that, like so. Now, as you can see, I'm starting to get a lot of, of lines going on here. And what you can start doing is you can start erasing the ones that you don't need. For example, um, in this particular one, what we're doing is we are not using and never erase your vanishing point because that's your your key key point and let's just go in here and we're just going to erase and i've erased my vanishing point sorry about that i'll draw it in there in a second so you're going to go in and erase the parts that you don't need and i just actually erased the back wall of my hallway so let's put that back in so now we've got this there we go back wall of the hallway 
So now that we've got this in there, we can put that table and chair set in there. But you have to realize that again, the table and chair set still is facing me. So if this is the table, I have to draw all my converging lines to this vanishing point here and then decide where the table ends and go across and let's start erasing some so you can see what's going on. So something like that. And now with these all converged in there, um, then you can start detailing the table up, you know, putting the legs. And again, everything follows that vanishing point. So we'd have stuff like that. So as I, as I keep building this up, I'd also have to put in This is my table, back table leg, and this goes towards the vanishing point, and so on and so forth. So I'm basically building up primitives inside of this inside of this hallway, and it's coming in to be the way I need it to be. Okay, so and then actually we don't need this line here. And these are going to go away, and then you don't need this. This is going to go away, and so on and so forth. So as I'm building my table, like so, um, everything kind of lines up and, and is follows in that vanishing point. The big thing about one-point vanishing is that no matter what you do, you have to understand that that vanishing point is... is everything is facing towards you and, and the vanishing point is all converging to from that. So everything is going to this vanishing point. Now, say you want to, one of the things that you want to always pay attention to is that you always want to pay attention to um, measurement in this. Okay, so now looking at this, this table looks relatively decent um, but if we decide that we're going to measure this out so I'm going to just kind of eye down um, some real quick measurements here so with this we're going to say that this is pretty close to a 10 foot ceiling uh, a little bit I mean my measurements are a little bit off especially down here <laughs> but about a 10 foot ceiling so if that's the case we go from here down to here, oops, oops, uh, from this vanishing point to this vanishing point, um, that vanishing point goes in and is a little bit here. So this means that if this is measured correctly, this table is nearly a four foot table, which is fine. I mean, there's four foot tables out there. Um, but that gives you a measuring system um, from a vertical aspect. Now, from a horizontal aspect, what you need to do is you need to define the grid measurement distance. So we're going to just say this, and then actually undo that. So from a from a horizontal position in two point or one point, um, what you're doing here is you're measuring those same amount of units across. So at this, it's one two three, four, and so on and so forth. So from there, what you can do is you can get your, your vanishing points um, measured up like that. And then at this point in time, what you can do is you can pick, a, pick an object. So for this particular one, we're going to go like this. Um, and it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. We can go over here. It does not matter where you're doing it. Um, but you can actually build a grid system by creating a diagonal um, vanishing point. So something like this. I just drew, the, drew it to this vanishing point over here. And then from here, what you can do is go horizontal. Now, if I'm building this up, every horizontal or point, like so, now creates another point down the road 
And of course my things aren't even, so it's going to be a little bit awkward. But as you, as you start building this, you can build your grid and you know everything's going to fit along those lines. So you can actually do some sort of placement. So if I'm choosing, I can build maybe a pot here or something like that. It doesn't matter what it is. It just matters that I'm starting to build it like so. Um, and that pretty much creates my, my vanishing point for my, my two point. Now moving on, we're going to move over here. And moving on, what we're doing is we're creating three point. Now I'm going to just um, change some brush settings here. So I'm going to go to a little bit more green. But so I have to do less erasing. So a two point vanishing system is the same thing, except you have your vanishing points on the far ends of your um, your object. Now this time though, you can't draw anything facing towards you because if you're drawing it facing towards you you're changing it back into a one point vanishing system so it'd be kind of looking at like the corner of a house um, something like that you know you're looking at the corner so the first thing that you have to do is you have to draw the height that was an accident so the first thing is you draw the height and then from there from the top you have to follow to the left and to the right now, build like so, and there's your box. Now, what you need to understand is right now I drew the box, and it's actually, what's happening is the box is actually drawn bigger than you. And so what's going on is if I draw the hidden faces of this box, like so, and this is my box, like so, the hidden faces of this box are actually going to pop in like so. Now, what you have to realize is that I've drawn this box, and because I'm on the horizon line, I'm not going to see the top or the bottom of this box. If I draw one up here, that allows me to draw a horizon line. And remember, um, all your verticals in two point are straight. So that allows me to, to create um, the aspect of what I'm uh, of. I'm going to see the bottom here, and I'm going to see the front and foreground here. And that's pretty much two point. You just have to remember that all your verticals are straight up and down, and that you have to draw from left to left, right to right on the edge on the vertexes or the endpoints of your lines. And say if I were to draw one down here, I would just left to left and right to right. I'm doing this backwards, but you get the idea. So, so there is my second box or third box. So pretty much what I'm doing is I'm drawing my basic shapes. From there, what I can do is I can actually build in different shapes. So say I build in my cylinder and this now becomes my trash can or whatever I'm choosing to draw. Um, and what you need to understand is this shape up here has to maintain the same shape if it's a cylinder. Okay. Now from that point what you're what you need to understand is that if I've drawn my two point line here I'm going to start with a plane. And that plane is going to give me my base here. Now, if I draw a horizontal line across, that is actually starting, starts my grid. So again, the similar uh, reaction here, we're just going to keep drawing across, and that will actually allow you to place stuff back and forth. So one of the things that you have to realize is that if I draw the next line up here, it's going to screw up my grid. The grid is still going to be valid, but now what's going to happen is my squares are going to get bigger. And as they go bigger, it's you, you need to go further back in space. So what you need to do is you need to draw every other half square so that you'll get it like so. All right. 
and that's pretty much how to draw a two-point perspective. Now, the, the third point, and I'll just finish this up really quickly, the third point is a vanishing point in space. So, say we're building a square block here. That vanishing point would give me the depth that I need in space. And then from there, I can draw the top of that vanishing point like so and actually I need to go up a little bit more but so what's that what's that used for that's used for what they call worm's eye view and bird's eye views so from there that's pretty much where I'm um, where you're actually building up your um, you're building up your third point. So this would be for city escapes. You know, you're either looking up at a cityscape or down at a cityscape. Um, and that's really your basics on two-point perspective, three-point, and one-point. All right, I hope that helps.